Hi guys, in this video we are going to continue on Unit 5 Atomic Structures and this time we are going to focus on these two pages. You see we have two huge tables and basically we are going to do a lot of practice in writing the electronic arrangements as well as to draw electron diagrams. Okay, Now for those of you who have forgotten how to determine the electronic arrangement I would advise you to go back to the previous videos and try to look at the later part of the video where basically we talked about how to talk how to write down the electronic arrangement. Now you need to know the electronic arrangement first before you can actually draw the electron diagram. So um, make sure you know how to do the electronic arrangement. Now there is one worked example I'm going to explain from here and then I will do perhaps one or two more examples and then I will leave the rest of you uh, to do it yourself and then at the end we are going to check the answers okay so that would be today's itinerary very straightforward now you see this one for nitrogen so the first thing we're gonna know is the electronic arrangement which is this one so this is the electronic arrangement okay how the electrons are being arranged so for nitrogen it is number seven now we are, because we are talking about the first 20 elements right so actually all this number uh, not only represent uh, the number of the questions but it also uh, actually the atomic number actually these are the atomic numbers so here nitrogen the atomic number is seven that means it has seven electrons to be arranged at um, again, we first put the electrons into the inner shell, which is the first shell. So you see two electrons has been allocated into the first shell. Now, remember, the first shell can only contain two electrons. So after putting two electrons inside, it is full. After that, the remaining five electrons, we can simply put it into the second shell knowing the fact that the second shell can hold at most eight electrons, right? So this is two comma five, that would be the electronic arrangement, okay? Now, what about electron diagram? So for electron diagram, first of all, we need to write, the, write down the atomic symbol in the middle. So for nitrogen, the atomic symbol is N, okay? Now, for atomic symbol, of course, right now, as you do the practice, you can always refer to the last page of the notes. Now you can always refer to the periodic table and look for the symbol, okay? But remember, at the exam, you are not provided with, um, you are not provided with a periodic table, so you have to memorize the atomic symbol for at least the first 20 elements, okay? So, after you write down the chemical symbol and then you need to draw the shells now you see here we have two shells right so two circles okay and then you see we use the cross or dot to represent the number of electrons uh, we call this one dot and cross diagram so I can put it here we call this one dot and cross diagram so basically we use dot or cross to represent the electrons. Now, how do we write down the electrons? Actually, there is no specific requirement. Like, to be honest, you can put the electrons at any places on the shell because they are revolving, they are moving all the time. However, we, we try to, you know, uh, make it more systematic, more easy to comprehend. So usually, we will start by adding the electrons at the top bottom position and the left right okay so you see on the first shell here we put one electron at the top one electron at the bottom and it's full and that's it then we move on to the second shell and we have five electrons so what we did is we put down one electron at the top one electron at the bottom one electron on the left one electron on the right okay now what about the fifth electron now the fifth electron in order to facilitate our counting of electrons, usually we will draw it as a pair. We put it at the top, okay? So this is how we draw the electron diagram, okay? Top, bottom, left, right, and then start to pair up, okay? Um, 
So let me give you another example, shall we? So how about we do uh, sodium? Huh? Sodium is a good choice, which is on the next page here. So sodium. So um, for sodium, first of all, electronic arrangement, it is number 11 for the atomic number. So there are 11 electrons to be allocated. So the electronic arrangement would be 2, 8, 1. Okay, you should not have any problem with this part, this step. Okay, now for sodium, the chemical symbol you can check on the periodic table, or if you are familiar with it, it should be Na, Na. Okay, and then we have three shells, right? So we will draw one circle, two circles, and of course, three circles. Okay, and then the next step is we try to uh, indicate the electrons. So to indicate the electrons, we can use dot and cross diagram. So we can use uh, dots this time, okay? Um, so two electrons in the inner shell, so we can put down, okay, two dots like this, okay? And then eight electrons on the outside, like I said, top, bottom, left, right, okay? And then you start to pair up, okay? Dots, bottom, left, right, okay? Again, it is not necessary. Like I said, there is no set of rule of talking about how to indicate the electrons. As long as they are on the correct corresponding shell, that would be okay. But this one is just to uh, facilitate the, the markers to count the electrons to see whether you make a mistake or not. So try to follow this one and the marker, the teacher will be happy, okay? Now the last electron, of course, we put it at to, at, on the third shell, okay? And that should do it, that should do it. Okay, just do one more, just do one more. Um, probably we will do uh, potassium, okay, potassium. So for potassium, okay, 19. So the electronic arrangement should be 2, 8. Now, should we put down 2, 8, 9? Should we put down 2, 8, 9? Huh? No, we should not put down 2, 8, 9 because if you remember last time from the previous video, we said that there are something called special case, special case, and we have two special cases, um, potassium, calcium. For potassium, very often we would predict it to be 289, okay? However, it turns out to be 2881, it turns out to be 2881. So this one you need to bear in mind, okay? So for this one, we should put down 2881, okay? So when it comes to the electron diagram, okay, so first of all, the chemical, the atomic symbol, which is K, all right? So here we have four occupied electron shells. So you have to be um, using the space wisely, okay, because we have so many occupied electron shells, okay? Now this one, okay, I try to occupy a little bit more space outside the box, but you know, uh, just draw the way that you can, you think that is able to represent the number of electrons clearly, okay? Now, this time I will use the crosses, uh, again, two, and then here, this is the second shell, and then the third shell, actually, if, if you already know that there are eight electrons there, then you can put down here, <coughs> and then lastly, over here. Okay, so this is the idea. Now you may think, hey, what if uh, we have like two eight, like ten two? Okay, some some trans some some elements they have uh, more than eight electrons on the third shell. So if that is the case, you try to occupy these areas again. Uh, the, the key is you try to represent the number of electrons as clear as possible, as simple as possible, so that people can be able to count the electrons easily. Okay, that's the idea. Now, so I think with these uh, demonstration, you should be able to uh, draw the rest of them, okay? So my advice is, starting from now, you can pause the video and you can try to draw all of this by yourself. And um, we have how many? We have 17 left. So I, I would expect you to be able to finish it off within 15 minutes, okay? And uh, so now pause the video, try all of them, and then I will show you the answers. Basically, I will, I will show you how I work on it, okay? So, pause the video right now.
Okay, so uh, have you finished? So if you have finished, let's check the answers. So um, yeah, there's nothing I need to talk about. It's just all like practice and be careful. Um, yeah. Okay, next page, sodium. Okay, so that would be all 20 electronic diagrams and electronic arrangement for the first 20 elements. So make sure you know uh, all of this very well. Um, you will expect to have maybe one or two questions asking you to draw the electron diagram of the element. Okay, next page, we still have one item to discuss before we end today's video. Okay. Now, let's just say we have two atoms, okay? Let's just say we have two atoms. We have atom X and atom Y, okay? Let's put it down. And for these two atoms, I will give you the subatomic particle composition, okay? So for atom X, the number of proton, it has six protons, okay? And then the number of neutron, it has six neutrons and the number of electrons is obviously six electrons, okay? Now, for another atom, atom Y, okay? It has six protons and it has eight neutrons and lastly, it has, of course, six electrons, okay? Now, so if you look at all these subatomic sub particles, so I want to ask, for X, for example, for atom X, can you tell me which element does atom X belong to? Which element does atom X belongs to? So you know that the atom, uh, the, the number of proton is six, and you know that the number of proton equals to the atomic number. So the atomic number of atom X should be six, okay? And when you check your periodic table, or if you have already memorized it, you should know that for atomic number six, it is carbon, it is carbon. So that means atom X is actually carbon, is a carbon atom, in other words, okay? Now, what about atom Y? Now, when you check atom Y, eh, you see the number of proton is also six. So the atomic number is also six. That means atom Y is also an atom of carbon. Right? So you realize that both atom X and Y are atoms of the same element, which is carbon. But what is the difference between the two? Well, the difference is obviously the number of neutrons, right? One is six, one is eight. But you realize one thing, no matter how many neutrons it has, it does not affect whether it is carbon or not. In other words, the number of neutron does not determine the element of which this atom belongs to, all right? It could be six, it could be seven, it could be eight, it could be uh, virtually 100, it is still carbon atom. However, this number of neutron affects one thing, which is the mass number, the mass number. Because you remember, mass number is the sum of number of proton and neutron. So for atom X here, the mass number is 12, but for atom Y, the mass number is 14, okay? So if you use a full atomic symbol to represent these two atoms, then we can put down, okay, atom X is C, okay, 12, 6, okay? Whereas this one 
is C146. You realize that they are both carbon. They have the same atomic number but different mass number. Okay? Now, so how do we describe this two? Okay, how do we describe or distinguish these two? So uh, both of them are carbon atoms, but if we want to put it more precise, we say that these two are two carbon isotope. Isotope. So here comes the term here, isotope. Now you see, isotope, the Chinese meaning is very meaningful to me, uh, because we are talking about elements occupying the same position on the periodic table. So if there are elements occupying the same position on the periodic table, that means they are the same elements, okay? But they are just different atoms, okay? They are just different atoms of the same elements. So here, guys, I will ask you, okay, I cannot stress it even more, the definition of isotope, very important. Basically, every year, we will kind of ask about the definition of isotope. Now, bear in mind, for isotopes definition, we have two parts. First of all, you must say that isotopes are actually different atoms of the same element. So different atoms of the same element, this one, okay? And what is the difference? You need to mention about the difference. So they have the same number of protons, okay? But different number of neutrons. They have different number of neutrons. So this is the second part of the definition. So very often students will only be able to memorize the last part. So very often when I ask you, oh, what is isotopes? Then you will say, oh, they have same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Usually you will get one mark out of two. Very often you will forget about the first statement, which is they are in fact the different atoms of the same element. So bear this in mind. Now. Uh, another way to represent same number of protons but different number of neutrons is that we can say that they have the same atomic number, they have the same atomic number, but it has different mass number. It has different mass number. So just now I have shown you. For this two, they have the same atomic number, which is equal to 6, but the mass number, one is 12, one is 14. Okay, so that would be uh, another way to represent or another way to cover the concept where they have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons, okay? Now, here, we say that since they have the same number of protons, they would as well have the same number of electrons, right? Because you remember, uh, atoms must be electrically neutral. So if you have six protons, you must have six electrons. Okay, now if they have the same number of electrons, then their electronic arrangement should also be the same. Do you agree? Electronic arrangement should also be the same. And do you remember what is the importance of electronic arrangement? If you go back to the previous page, you will see that the electronic arrangement determines the chemical properties. All right, so if they have the same electronic arrangement, if these two have the same electronic arrangement, then their chemical properties should also be the same, should also be identical, all right? So here, isotope have same chemical properties, okay? Because of the, because of the same electronic arrangement. However, they have slightly different physical properties. Okay, slightly different physical property due to the difference in mass, in mass, okay? So why is that? Think about it as an example. Think about density, okay? Think about density. So density equals to mass over volume, okay? In fact, if no matter you are carbon 12 or carbon 14, both atom is having the same size. Uh, as a matter of fact, the size is determined by the electron cloud, um, the size of the electron cloud, because they have the same number of electrons and um, something else, therefore they have the same size. So the volume is the same. However, the mass is different 
you know, this one is obviously heavier than this one, right? So that means for the two isotopes, for the two carbon isotopes, they have the same volume, but the mass is, the masses are different. So the density of the two isotopes would also be different. So that's why they have slightly different physical properties, okay? That's the idea. Now, here, these are some examples. You know, hydrogen, it has a couple of isotopes. So, uh, they, these are actually quite uh, famous. So, the hydrogen isotope here, and this one is called deuterium. This one is called tritium, okay? Uh, so, very famous isotope because actually the isotope of hydrogen, so these two are used in nuclear fusion reaction, nuclear fusion reaction, which is potentially a reaction that the, it, that can generate a lot of energy where we can harness the energy to convert it into electricity, okay? However, nowadays the technology is not able to control the reaction, so uh, we're still unable to actually harness the energy from that reaction, but it would be our future um, uh, goal, okay, to, to see how we can harness the energy from there. Now, anyway, um, do you remember for hydrogen, I did talk about one particular feature related to the subatomic particles for hydrogen. We say that, okay, at the very first uh, page of Unit 5, we say that uh, an atom uh, uh, is composed of three subatomic particles, proton, neutron, electrons, right? And we say that except for hydrogen, which does not have neutron. Now, uh, to be more precise, to be more precise, we are referring to this particular hydrogen isotope. So this guy, it does not have a neutron, okay? It has only a proton and an electron, okay? However, this guy and this guy, these two guys, they do have neutrons, right? It has one neutron, it has two neutrons, okay? So that's why uh, this one we need to um, recap, okay? So not all the hydrogen atoms are having no neutrons. It's just some hydrogen atom does not have neutron, okay? But uh, when it comes to the actual percentage, we say that most of the hydrogen atoms are in this form. So we only get very small amount of this too. So, so uh, that's why some people will say that hydrogen atom does not have neutron. Okay, but to be more precise, it is the hydrogen one isotope that does not have any neutron. Okay, so this is another example for chlorine. It has two naturally occurring isotopes, which is chlorine 35, chlorine 37. Okay, now to describe isotopes, we can obviously use the full atomic symbol, and sometimes we will use another representation, for example. This one is also equal to what? Equal to chlorine 35, chlorine 37. So this is another way to represent an isotope. Sometimes we can say Cl35, okay, Cl37. Sometimes we can simply put Cl35, Cl37 because uh, if you know Cl, we should be able to know that it is uh, number 17 on the periodic table. So these are just different ways to represent uh, the isotope. So uh, in my question, I may use different representation to entail the isotopes. So at least you know the difference. Okay, so now that's it for today. That's it for today. Uh, I'll stop it here. Bye-bye.